Okay, so new for students, um, right at finals time, which is a, a blessing of a move by Autodesk, is free cloud rendering. And so I thought I would take a, a couple of seconds. This is a really simple tutorial. Um, but I know some people don't even know what render rendering in the cloud is. Um, the steps are very easy, but to alleviate any fear uh, or confusion about how easy the system is to use, I wanted to build a quick tutorial video just to go through it. So I have a uh, project here that I've been working on for a while. Um, this is the project uh, in Guadalajara. And what I need to do is, uh, let's say very quickly, I want to get a whole series of renderings out of this project into a client. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my View tab, Render in the Cloud, and that's going to launch um, basically the Autodesk 360 interface. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say Continue. The views that I want to render is uh, the step one, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I have the option of rendering all views. I don't really want to render my 3D view, so I'm just going to select this group. I'm not going to select panel. I want to show you uh, an additional little feature with that uh, here in just a few seconds. Um, the output image type, we're going to do stills, image quality. Well, if I'm going to render in the cloud, I'm absolutely jumping that to best. Um, I mean, what's the difference? It's not on my computer. Um, exposure, advanced is just fine. And I mean, why on earth would I not want to do the maximum file format size? Uh, I'm a big fan of JPEGs. I just like the fact that they're smaller. And I absolutely want to be notified via email when these are complete. So I'm going to click Start Rendering. And I should have one error message pop up um, because I kind of moved this project around. And I actually think I'm missing a couple of texture maps. Uh, but that's OK. I don't need the texture maps right now for rendering. Um, but realize if you do get that error message, that's something you'll probably want to resolve. Um, for the most part, tests that have been done, there is some subtle differences between um, rendering in the cloud and normal rendering. Um, but uh, you know the differences aren't huge. And as long as you start this process early in terms of rendering in the cloud, then you know what to anticipate. So these are the couple of JPEG uh, texture maps that I'm missing. Uh, for this project, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So right now, it's essentially uploading the file. Uh, and now I actually have um, all the files that are ready to start rendering in the cloud, which is great. Um, because what I can do next is I can either continue working on the project, or I can actually set up another cloud rendering as well. Uh, and in particular on that one, I'm going to set up a 360 panoramic image to render. So I'm going to click Render in the Cloud again, Continue. And this time, uh, I'm going to select a single file. And I'm going to go ahead and say, on my output type, an interactive panorama. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and start rendering. And again, I get the error message on a couple of the JPEG files. And so. What I can do next is um, I can go to my site um, that is specific to my account, to my Autodesk 360 account, and I can actually see the projects in process rendering. Um, again, these are renders that I would say if I was doing them on my computer would probably be in the neighborhood of a couple of hours apiece, um, and they're happening very, very quickly. Um, if we look at a batch that I've already run. So this is the group that's going right now. I'm going to refresh this one more time. Uh, the, the panoramic should show up as its rendering as well. So all of that stuff is in process and cooking. Um, and you know, I would anticipate all of these renderings getting back to me within about 10 to 15 minutes. And this might be a day's worth of computer work. Um, and in particular, computer work where you're not able to work on your computer because it's rendering which is really significant. So I ran all of these last night, um, just so you don't have to wait for 15 minutes. Uh, you can see the average file time is in the neighborhood of, you know, render time. Well, this one took a while, an hour, but that's actually a sun study. Um, seven minutes, five minutes. Let's just go ahead and take a look at this one. So I can click on any image. 
and it'll pull it up and you can see the, the, the quality of the renderings are excellent. I'm going to go ahead and open up an interactive panoramic file as well. Um, there are a few ways to view these offline. Um, in particular, if you go to the Revit Kids website, um, there's a link to a program called CubeGL. That's Cube with a K-U-B-E-G-L. I have had no success getting that program working, but apparently a lot of people have. Um, so this is an interactive um, 360 panoramic. Again, you lose some rendering quality, but you gain interactivity. And if you have key locations in your building that you really want to be able to see, uh, these are great files to work with. There are some additional programs that you can start to get, um, which do some interesting things as well. Like, for instance, if I wanted to chain together a series of interactives, um, I could create a hotspot, click here, and then view a 360 at that location. But these are excellent uh, files to discuss with clients, um, to really get into looking at the spaces uh, during a critique or anything like that in terms of really being able to get a better understanding of what the space is doing. And all of these are available in uh, the Autodesk 360 cloud.